Those of that opinion will say aye. <coughs> the contrary opinion will say no. The ayes have it. The question now is that state-owned enterprises stand part of the schedule. I call Moana Mackey. Thank you, Mr Chair. And Labor will be taking call on vote SOEs lest the Minister feel the need to stand up and give us chapters four and five of his autobiography, <laughs> which I'm sure he may do anyway, but, but we, will, uh, we will stand and take some calls on vote SOEs. And, and, and it, it, it has to be said that I don't think there is any other area of this government's plan where there have been more U-turns, more tyre kicking, more running it up and down the flagpole than in the area of state-owned enterprises. And what we would like to hear from this minister is, are asset sales part of National's long-term plan for this country? Are they part of the long-term plan for this country? Because the day after the budget, the day after the budget, the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, Bill English, floated the idea of privatisation of Kiwi Bank. The day after the budget. And this is the man who wrote the budget. This is a man who you would assume knows a little bit about what's going on in terms of revenue for the government future plans. The day after the budget, we're being expected to believe that as a mistake, the Minister of Finance floated the idea of the privatisation of Kiwi Bank. Well, I think New Zealanders know differently, and they know differently from experience, because the National Party desperately would love to be able to privatise SOEs. And the reason they can't do it is because New Zealanders don't want them to sell, the, to sell our silver to overseas interests. Right. It's what's happened before. We didn't become any wealthier because we lost control of assets in New Zealand. In fact, far from it. But they've had to swallow that dead rat, and as a TV3 poll said, because 80% of New Zealanders are opposed to asset sales. 80%. I mean, the Minister of Energy and Resources based his entire mining policy on a TV3 poll. His entire mining policy on a TV3 poll. And so they know that 80% of New Zealanders are opposed to asset sales. And interestingly enough, 53% of New Zealanders don't believe the Prime Minister when he says that he will never sell assets. The they don't believe him. And that's just the backbench of the never National never Party. Never in, never in their first term. That's right, Mr Parker, thank you. 53% don't believe that, because they know that the National Party are fundamentally opposed to the ownership of these state assets. So we would like to hear from the Minister why the policy that the National Party has always held, which has been privatisation either wholly or partially of these assets, why they've now backed away from them. Is he admitting they were wrong in the past? Is he now admitting that the privatisation of those assets in the past didn't work and was wrong? And was wrong? No, we'll, we'll rub our chat and not say anything. Well, David Carter did sell, did sell contact energy. And I want to talk a little bit about Kiwi Bank because Kiwi Bank is an asset that New Zealanders are extremely proud of. It's an asset that Jim Anderton, uh, in, in Labor's first term in government, when Jim Anderton and the Alliance Party had as a policy Kiwi Bank, Labor is very proud of the work that Kiwi Bank has been doing. New Zealanders do not feel that the Australian-run banks, ha banks have been working in their best interests. They know that interest rate cuts haven't been passed on, haven't been passed on in the way that they have been in Australia. And New Zealanders very, very much value the work that Kiwi Bank does, and I believe would like to see Kiwi Bank able to do more in New Zealand and work for New Zealanders. So what did Bill English say? Well, the Finance Minister advocated the sale of Kiwi Bank because he said it would be good for mum and dad investors right, in right. New Zealand. Well, news flash to Bill English, mum and dads in New Zealand already own Kiwi Bank. All of them. All of them. And that is the prime example of Tory charity. Yes, indeed. Take something people already own and sell it back to them. <laughs> Except we know that it won't be sold back to them. It will be lost overseas like so many other assets. And I imagine there are a number of donors to the National Party out there who are already lining themselves up to purchase these very profitable, very well-run state-owned enterprises. And they know that Bill English has got himself in trouble because he has passed unaffordable tax cuts and he has to pay for them somehow. And he doesn't care about long-term interest for New Zealand's economy. He has no plan for the long-term interest of New Zealand's economy. He just needs to get himself out of a hole, which is that he passed tax cuts, 25% of which went to the top 5% of New Zealanders, $4 billion to the top 5% of New Zealanders, and he has to pay for them. And hocking off 
New Zealand's family silver in the form of state-owned enterprises would be a very easy short-term way of doing that. Of course, long-term it does nothing for the New Zealand economy. Long-term it would be detrimental. Um, in part of the country I live in, we suffered enormously because of the loss of our rail line. We're desperately trying to keep it. Desperately, Mr Chair. I call Moana Mackey. Thank you. Desperately trying to keep our rail line open because the National Party want to turn it into a cycle way. They want to turn a cycle oh, Clearly none of them have ever been to that part of the country and seen it. It will probably be the most treacherous cycle way over the Mohawk of Viaduct that there is anywhere else. It will be true adventure tourism. And we sincerely hope that the government will keep that rail line open because we fought long and hard to get it back. The previous Labor government did that. They put the money in to, uh, invested the money in it to get the rail up to speed and we want to see more traffic on that rail line and off our roads. Um, we wouldn't have had to do that, of course, if it hadn't been hocked off at bargain basement uh, prices in the first place, but that's the position that we ended up in. And then we look at the example of, of, of Air New Zealand and, and many of our state-owned enterprises, the list goes on and on and on. So New Zealanders want to know, and the opposition wants to know, what is the government's plan for state-owned enterprises? What role does the government see them playing um, over the next financial year, over the years beyond that? Because so far, as I said before, all we've seen are flip-flops, all we've seen are U-turns, all we've seen are these, these grand statements and then, and then hurried back-downs as the public have had their say on how they feel about the sale of state assets. We had the Prime Minister, John Key, who is on record a number of times, many, 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 many times, saying we will never, ever sell state-owned enterprises or state assets. Never, ever. Now, to me, never, ever means that at no point, while John Key is leader of the National Party, would the sale of state assets ever be considered. But then he said that just meant we weren't going to sell them in our first term, which raises a question to the Minister, which one of those two statements is right? Because both of them cannot be correct. Will National never, ever sell state assets, or will they just not sell them in their first term? Because the Minister and, and the Prime Minister like to say that, you know, well, we will go into an election campaign with a mandate on this issue. Well, they didn't go into an election campaign with a mandate on raising GST. Right, OK, Mr Tremaine, did you... OK. Then I say to Mr. Tremaine, did you ask voters, did you tell voters about your plan to raise GST? GST. Oh, no. That's exactly right. And this is why, this is why the government cannot be trusted. Because it's all very well to talk about having a mandate and putting it to voters at an election. In fact, that's what should happen. That's what should happen. But this government does not have a record of doing this. They never went to the public about mining in national parks. Never, but they were talking to the mining companies about it. They never went to the public about increasing GST. And yet come 1 October, we will have an increase in GST. So when this Prime Minister says, well, we will make sure that we tell New Zealanders if we're going to sell state assets during an election campaign, we will tell them, and then they will have the opportunity to vote on that issue. Uh, and if they feel strongly, they can vote against us. And if they don't feel strongly about it, they can vote on other issues. They have no credibility, no credibility, because they haven't done that on other key policies which are of extreme importance to New Zealanders, the protection of our environment and how they pay the family bills every single week. So I ask the Minister to stand up again and tell us which one of the Prime Minister's statements are correct, that National will never, ever sell assets or that they just won't do it in their first term. I ask them to give us a guarantee that if national, part of National's long-term plan for New Zealand is to sell state assets, that they will admit to it during an election campaign. Number two, that they will tell us who has been donating to them in that election campaign. They won't funnel it through a trust so that New Zealanders can't see who are funding the National Party. Because those are important when it comes to this debate on state-owned enterprises. Because New Zealanders have been here before. It was a disaster. The Labor government inherited an incredible infrastructure deficit that it took us, that it took us nine years... Yeah, me. Right. Yeah, OK, Mr Tremaine. I was at primary school during the fourth Labor government. That's fine. So Mr Tremaine thinks that the 1990s national government did nothing to sell assets. Nothing to sell assets. Mr Tremaine might want to go out and explain to his constituents why their electricity costs so much. 
why the electricity. And then Chris Tremaine doesn't even know what he's talking about. He just said Labor sold BNZ. It was actually the National Party.